Hey there, welcome or welcome back to yet another video on the monkey's paw. Today's story will be all about ferroelectrics. These are a class of substances which are absolutely unique and have properties that are only specifically unique to them and differ from all the other substances. So today's story will be all about that and also at the end I'm going to share a very fun fact about these kind of substances. So stay tuned till the end for that and uh, let's begin. So ferroelectrics are a kind of substances that if you apply a field, an electric field, it tends to get polarized in a certain way, which other substances do not. The term ferroelectric, any substance will be ferroelectric only when it has a state of polarization. It gets polarized in such a way that is completely spontaneous and unpredictable. Now, what does polarization mean? Polarization, the essential idea is it, so when an external field is applied, the molecules of the ferroelectric get aligned in completely random directions. So their motions will be in unpredictable directions. You cannot say or put down uh, or write it in a mathematical form. So they are, this is what characterizes a ferroelectric. Now, a ferroelectric has certain properties and to define those properties, a graph was crafted. Now this graph is also called the hysteresis loop. Before that, we should know how this polarization happens. It's very easy to say uh, a field is applied, a pressure is created like a high dense region to a low dense region and the molecules should get aligned from the high to the low. But how does it happen? It is also explained in such a way that there are domains, like what is a domain inside this ferroelectric? You imagine a glass, like a ice cubicle without the ice in it. So it's basically a cube with a lot of space in it. That can be considered as one domain. Now there are different various regions of space uh, like this, uh, cubicle and within this regions of space known as domains the molecules will be aligned in the same direction which and in another domain that will be uh, uh, the molecules will be aligned in a very different direction so all the domains inside every domain the molecules have the same alignment direction but no two domains will have the same direction of polarization now to explain this a hysteresis loop was coined uh, and it depicts a behavior of a typical ferroelectric. Now, the hysteresis loop means that when you apply an electric field, the pole state of polarization is such. From the loop, which will be shown here or somewhere here or here above, you will see that there is a part called OABC. Now, if you, if I apply a field which is corresponding to B and I join it down, I join it down, I extrapolate it to a point, we will see that when the electric field is absolutely zero, there is no electric field along the x-axis, absolutely zero, there remains a certain state of polarization already. That is because the state of polarization means, it has a name, it is called the spontaneous polarization, and it stays even when there is no applied electric field. When the ferroelectric is in the normal state, then also it has a certain state of polarization. This polarization is called the spontaneous polarization. <laughs> now the question which comes is, is a substance ferroelectric at all temperatures uniformly or there is a certain specific condition which which defines the ferroelectric parameters. Now usually a substance is ferroelectric which means that it gets aligned slash polarized in any random direction on applying electric field pressure. A substance is uh, ferroelectric only up to a certain temperature, which is known as a critical temperature. Above this critical temperature, what happens? The substance ceases to be, stops to be a ferroelectric. It does not show any ferroelectric properties above that temperature. That is the usual case. But there is a substance known as the Rochelle salt. It is, it is actually a sodium potassium salt of the tartaric acid and has a really elaborated formula, which I'm not going into since I'm not a um, chemistry person. So Rochelle salt is the only salt is the only compound which has two transition temperatures or critical temperatures. It shows the property, ferroelectric property, only within a certain range, minus 18 degrees centigrade to 23 degrees centigrade. And so it has two critical temperatures. Below minus 18, minus 19, minus 20, and henceforth, it shows no ferroelectric properties and above 23 degrees centigrade also it does not show any ferroelectric property it only shows the properties of a ferroelectric between these two temperatures and this is what makes Russell salt really unique and it also happens to be the first salt uh, first compound that was studied for 
ferroelectric uh, property verification. So yeah, that's it about ferroelectrics. I think I did a pretty well job explaining what it is. If you have any doubts or questions that you want me to clarify or elaborate upon, you can put them down in the comments below. Till then, I think that's it for today's video. Well, uh, let's see you in the next upcoming videos, which are going to be very soon. And we will we'll be discussing a lot of new, unexplored and interesting topics here on the monkeys. Bye.